If you have a normalized list and you want to convert it to a matrix with column headers and row headers, the first option that comes to your mind is to create a pivot table or use a pivot by function, but both of them will fail. I am Nabil Murad. In this tutorial, I convert a list into a matrix using a simple creative solution that combines classic and dynamic array functions. Let's see the work situation. In this worksheet, I have a list which shows the distance between major cities. I have 66 records, but I want to convert this list into a matrix that shows row headers for cities sorted alphabetically and it shows column headers across the top as well. At the intersection of any two cities, I get the distance. This matrix shows 132 numbers, while my original source list shows only 66 records, half the numbers only. And the reason for this, in the source list, if I want to know the distance between Cairo and Rome, it's 2152 kilometer. However, the distance between Rome and Cairo is exactly the same than in the source list. I don't have duplicate for the city combination. If I get from Cairo to Rome, I don't get a record from Rome to Cairo because it's the same exact distance. And that's the real problem. I will try to create this matrix by creating a pivot table. Then I select any cell, I go to the Insert tab of the ribbon, I click on Pivot Table, I want to create it in the existing worksheet, I hit OK. In the Pivot Table field list, I drag the From to the Rows drop area, I drag the To to the Columns, and I drag the Kilometer to the Values area, and I would have created my Pivot Table. I removed the Grand Totals for the Columns and the Rows, and if I look at the number, I'm getting the report I want, but I'm getting only 66 numbers. So if you look at the distance between Cairo and Rome, it's 2152. If you look at the distance between Rome and Cairo, then I get a blank. I'm getting 50% of the numbers. If I want to get the other 50% of the numbers, the easiest solution is to copy this entire pivot table. And then I paste it below the previous one and I switch the columns into rows. I drag the two to the rows. I drag the from to the columns and I get the opposite 66 numbers. If I want to get the report I'm looking for, that means I would like to add the numbers from the two pivot tables to get this report. And that's not a good solution. Then I'm going to delete my pivot tables. And on the next worksheet start, I'll be creating my solution in which I'll be using a sum ifs function within a let function. The let function allows me to create variables and use these variables in calculations. So in cell G2, I'm going to create my let function. Let's expand the formula bar control shift U and I type equal let and then I hit tab. My first variable will be named A. And this A variable will be storing the row headers, so I want to use a sort and unique function. I select the values from A2 down to the end, shift control down, arrow control backspace, and then I close the bracket for the unique and the sort function. I type a comma and then alt enter to move to the next row. And in the next row, I want to create my variable B. And the variable B will be storing the column header by transposing the variable A. So I type comma and then I type transpose. I hit tab. I want to transpose the variable A. I close the bracket. I type comma, alt, enter, and I move to the next line. The third variable will be named C. This is where I'll be storing my sum ifs function. I type C and then comma. I want to sum based upon two conditions. I type sum ifs, I hit the tab key. What would you like to sum? I want to sum the numbers in column C. I select the first number, shift control down, arrow control backspace. And then for each condition, I have a pair of argument. My first condition is in the from. I select all the values in column A from A2 down to the end. And then I type a comma. My condition in this range is whatever the variable a returns then i type a 
and then I type comma. My second condition is the two column. Then I select the first value from B2, shift control down, arrow control backspace. I type a comma and my condition will be the column header, the variable B. I close the bracket for the sum ifs and then I type a comma. And just to test, I'm going to hit Alt enter and I want to return C and close the bracket for the let function. When I hit enter, I'm getting 66 numbers. There are lots of gaps because from city A to city B, I get a number, but from city B to city A, I don't have a corresponding record. Then I need the opposite of this set of numbers. I need the opposite of what the SUMFs function will be returning. And I'm going to use a creative way for solving this issue. I edit my let function. I delete the closing bracket for the let function and the return value C. And I create my new variable D. And the variable D will be the result of the sum if function C plus the opposite of the numbers, which will be the transpose of C. I close the bracket for the transpose function. I type a comma. I hit Alt Enter. And let's test one more time by typing D and close the bracket for the let function. When I hit Enter, I get exactly what I'm looking for. What is missing so far are the row headers and the column headers. And that's very easy. I'm going to create another variable that stores the row headers. I delete the closing bracket and D and the new variable will be E. I already extracted the row headers, the variable A, but in the upper left corner of my setup, I need a blank cell. Then I'll be using a VStack function and then I hit tab. I want a blank, double quote, double quote, comma the variable A and I close the bracket for the VStack function. That's the variable E. I type a comma and then I hit Alt Enter and here will be my function for the let. I want to put the row header side by side with the result of the sum ifs function and the column header. And that will be an edge stack function. I type edge stack. I hit tab. What would you like to stack side by side? I want the variable E. I type a comma and I want the column header on top of the result of the sum ifs and the transpose sum ifs function. Then I type a vstack function. I want the variable B, comma, and the variable D. I close the bracket for the VStack. I close the bracket for the H stack. I close the bracket for the let function. When I hit enter, I get exactly the result I'm looking for. And I was able to convert my list into a matrix with row headers and column headers by using a sum ifs, transpose, sort, unique, V stack, H stack, and the let function. If you found value in this tutorial, give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to my channel to be notified when new tutorials are released. The best is yet to come. Thanks for watching and see you next time.